Our dear friend here at Cornerstone Television Network, Larry Sparks, is with us today. He is the publisher of Destiny Image. He's also a revivalist and a prophetic minister, and he has a word that's in his spirit concerning this region of Pittsburgh and beyond. And Larry, we are so glad that you are with us today, and we just honor the gift that is inside of you. So can you just share with us what God has deposited and downloaded in your spirit yeah. that you want the viewers to hear today? I believe this is a word for your territory. Toy. This is a word actually for the Eastern Seaboard with emphasis in Pittsburgh. So just track with me just for a minute. Pittsburgh is not on my radar at all. I've actually come up regularly to the Harrisburg and Shippensburg area because that's where Destiny Image is located. But Pittsburgh, I've only been here once before. But just recently, the Lord set us up. It was a supernatural setup where I went and ministered locally here in the Pittsburgh area. We had a powerful time of prayer, but it was interesting because I have a dear friend who's a prophet. He's also on the Apostolic Council of Prophetic Elders with me under Cindy Jacobs. His name is Tommy Evans. He had no idea I was coming to Pittsburgh. Um, and usually we talk about all this kind of stuff. And he said, Larry, I have this weird random dream. I said, what, what did you dream about? He said, I had a dream about Pittsburgh. I had a dream that we were doing a gathering in Pittsburgh called Revive Pittsburgh and that God was doing something supernatural, that he was pouring out his spirit specifically in the Pittsburgh area. He, again, had no idea I was going to minister in Pittsburgh through an amazing quick chain of coincidences. Tommy ended up having to fill in for one of the speakers at the conference that I was speaking at and therefore... He came, shared the dream, God poured out his spirit. And at the end of this gathering, we just were in a Holy Spirit swirl concerning the territory. We were praying, we were prophesying. And uh, we really feel like, I really sense that a well of revival, I'm going to explain what that means. A well of revival has been and it is being uncapped in the territory. You know, a well, that we get that from the book of Genesis where it talks about Abraham had dug wells for pure water. And those wells were filled up with the debris and the dirt of the Philistines. All the junk, all the nonsense. May I put it in more contemporary context? All the sin. God has moved powerfully in Pittsburgh. God has moved supernaturally. But sadly, over years, those wells of revival, those places where he poured out pure living water, have gotten filled in. We've gotten very relevant. We've gotten cool. We, we're, when, it, when it comes to even ministry, we want to do what we can to attract people. But what attracts people is not us trying to be like the world. What will attract people who don't know Jesus is the sound of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Going back to the book of Genesis, it took a young man named Isaac. Isaac was the son of Abraham. And it says, Isaac redug the wells of his father, Abraham. I prophesy right now, God is raising up a generation, even in Pittsburgh, young people. I see Gen Z. I see Gen Z right now. You may not be watching right now, but parents of Gen Z, I want you to encourage your young people, your son and daughter, fan the flame of the Holy Spirit inside of them. I believe God is giving them shovels in the Spirit. They are going to be those who redig these wells. Well, what wells? You may not know the territory, the spiritual history of your territory, but I'm going to remind you, there was a woman named Catherine Coleman who did sustained regular meetings in Pittsburgh where people came from all over the world and were supernaturally healed. There's a place called Duquesne University that was the epicenter of the 1960s charismatic renewal where I always say no denomination, no church group was safe from the Holy Spirit. Pittsburgh, you're rich. You are spiritually rich. You have a wonderful, glorious inheritance. And I see the Lord passing out shovels. It's an interesting thing, but I'm seeing it right now in the spirit. He's saying, who's willing to dig? Good news is this. You don't need to wait around for some sovereign thing to happen. Well, God will pour out his spirit when he wants to. I got good news for you. 2,000 years ago, he poured out his spirit. 2,000 years ago, a day of Pentecost took place. The spirit of God has been given. Where are the people? I feel like God is asking, where are the people of Pittsburgh? Where are the, where are the Christians? Where are the believers? Where are the leaders in Pittsburgh who say, God, we will host your spirit at any cost. We will make room for you. We will cry out and pray. It's time for the prayer meeting again. I prophesy even right now there's going to be lines outside of churches because of the prayer meeting. Not the conference, not the special event. Those are great. I see lines outside of churches because people know in that prayer meeting, I will meet the Holy Spirit. I will partner with the Holy Spirit. It's no longer about coming and just, I'm going to pray my little list. Listen, if prayer is about lists, 
quiet, empty rooms, somber music, then prayer is going to be boring. Prayer is an adventure with God. Intercession is not begging God to do something. It's burning with God. It's where you are marked with the things that God wants to release into the earth. So I want to prophesy. I believe God's going to raise up prayer meetings. I believe he's going to raise up prayer meetings in homes. But church leaders, I believe he's going to actually burden you to open the doors of your churches once a week where you will say, we are going to go after God. And I feel like the Lord is saying, Larry, tell them it's revival prayer. It's revival prayer. You want to read about any move of God that shook this this nation, go back and read E.M. Bounds, Finney, Daniel Nash, who is the intercessor for Finney. You read any of the old timers. You know, Steve Hill of the Brownsville Revival said, I read books by people who are dead because I know that they're not going to fall away from Jesus. I think that's, that's Steve Hill for you. But you read the old timers. You read Jonathan Edwards. You read any of those folks. Frank Bartleman, the great Azusa Street intercessor. And you know what the common denominator is. They saw revival. They saw a landscape changing move of God. They prayed. So I believe the Lord is saying, Pittsburgh, pray. I feel, that. I feel, I feel the fire of God on that actually. Pittsburgh, pray. Who will pray? Because if you pray, he will come. If you pray. Listen, I went to Christian school as a kid, okay? We, 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 before class, we would pray. And that prayer was a joke. It was because we would try to make our teacher have time of prayer uh, so we didn't have to do school. We, we, would try to do, we would try to do elongated times of prayer and make it so ritualistic just so we didn't want to go to class. So, you know, you'd have Johnny praying for his pet goldfish and you have Susie with five unspoken prayer requests. I don't know if you've ever heard unspoken prayer requests. Come on. God is looking for people who cry out. And I'm going to, just with a few minutes here left, I just want to pray right now in the name of Jesus. I actually feel like a spirit of prayer is falling on people. I did not predict going in this direction. A spirit of, not, 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 no more boring prayer. I feel like the Lord said, I'm lifting the ceiling. I'm lifting the lid off of your prayer life. I'm, I believe the Lord is saying, I'm bringing you into an adventure with me. Well, you might have a list and that's all right. Pray for those people, but actually say, God, what's on your list? I believe something supernatural will take place when you say, Holy Spirit, what are you saying about Pittsburgh? It's a different kind of prayer. It's a different kind of prayer because we're so accustomed to praying for our own needs and our own wants and our own desires. Yeah, keep doing that. But may I encourage you to just go to a new level in your maturity in prayer. Say, God, what are you saying about Pittsburgh? What are you saying about Pennsylvania? What are you saying about America? Because, Lord, I want to say what you are saying about the nation. And I know what the news is saying about the nation. I, I know what crime says about the nation. I know what immorality says about the nation. I know what all that stuff is saying about the nation. But you know what? God is compassionate and full of mercy. And I do believe he desires. You know, in the book of Joel, Joel chapter 2 talks about you know, Israel was in a crisis. Israel was in a bad state morally. But, you know, there was a word of the Lord that went forth and said, who knows, perhaps if my people would pray... I will respond. In other words, who knows if God will grant to us a time of reprieve or refreshing. But it, then it goes on to say, let my people pray. Let the people pray. And then right after that it says, and God will reply. Bottom line, we got to pray for this nation. Could it be we're in a hinge of history moment where where things go actually depends on on our prayers, on our involvement, even pastors and leaders in the pulpit, thunder again. Pastor, thunder. Preach truth. Declare the truth of God. In love, yes, but preach truth. We've got to declare the whole counsel of the word of God. Call your people to prayer. And I really believe these wells of revival that are not just in Pittsburgh. I believe this whole eastern seaboard is breaking open for a landscape changing move of God. I say that not out of hype. I say it because I've seen it in Maine. I've seen 500 people come together in a church in Maine, be apprehended by the Holy Spirit. Children, eight, nine years old, being completely undone by the power of God. I see it in New York and New Jersey. I'm going to these places regularly. I'm seeing God break out. I see hunger escalating. I see prayer being prioritized. And I see these wells of revival. Because by the way, New England, Northern Eastern Seaboard, you have a rich heritage of awakening. And I really believe the Lord is saying, who will partner with me? Who will pray with me? Who will contend for these wells of revival to be open? We are in an urgent hour. It is a hinge of history moment. But again, in Joel 2, who knows? Perhaps if we pray, 
we could shift things in Jesus' name. Larry, would you pray for us? Yeah. yeah. Pray for us. Yeah. Yeah. Pray for us right now. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. now. Father, we thank you for your wonderful presence, God. And Lord, let us be those people. I know it's easy to pray it, but God, may we be those people yes. who say, Lord, would you do what Isaiah 64, 1 says, God? Would you rend the heavens? <laughs> would you tear open the heavens, God, and come down? Lord, I know you poured out your spirit at Pentecost. But I, 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 you know, I feel like the blacksmith who is at the Hebrides Revival, who said, God, we hear about what you're doing, but we're not seeing it where we are right now. Lord, would you pour out the water on dry ground? And Lord, I pray that right now yes. over us here in the studio, over us in Pittsburgh, over the northern eastern seaboard, God, over the whole east coast, Lord, because that's the jurisdiction of this broadcasting assignment out of Cornerstone. Father, we yes. ask you to pour yes. out your spirit yes. in Jesus' name. And Lord, attached to that, May the leaders, may the pastors, may the people who have been given an assignment in that territory, may they say, Holy Spirit, we'll welcome you and host you at any cost. Yes. Huh. Yes. That's the last thing I want to pray. Be with, you want revival? We don't have the luxury of giving God terms to work with. We don't say, I want revival, but I don't want any of that shaking. I, I want revival, but I want mess. I want revival, but I don't want people getting delivered from demons. That's too crazy. I, I want revival, but I want the people crying and weeping. We want revival. We want the move of the Spirit and everything that comes with yes. it. Because we know it's that one moment in the presence of God that will completely and radically change someone's life forever. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, it's so powerful. Thank Amen. you for bringing an awesome word to oh, us. Oh, goodness, my joy, my joy. Hallelujah. Amen. We can just feel, there's like moments, you know, I think happen and we're on television, but there's moments oh. where the Holy Spirit just takes over and wrecks in and we just pray and we know we believe that the Holy Spirit has <laughs> wrecked your home <laughs> and has rushed in. And that's why this network cornerstone television exists you know i just think about the founding of russ and norma yeah. more than what's 43 43 44 44 44 44 years ago wow. and how they were part of the charismatic movement about how they just had a passion and a heart for everyone to know jesus and everyone to experience the holy spirit and so that's what we want for you. So you can give us a call at our prayer line at 888-665-4483 because we know you're called to pray. And Larry, do you have something else I that's do. in your spirit? Listen, I, I apparently we're, we're just going to go with the flow of the Holy Spirit. And But you know, you're talking about how long has Cornerstone been around? 40, was it 44 years? Yeah, Is that? Yeah. Okay. So funny. I felt like the Lord said Isaiah 44. So again, I'm opening up the box. I, I know exactly where he's going to have us go. But Isaiah 44 for 44 years, I really believe this is not just a prophetic word for you guys, but, oh, <laughs> now what's humorous about this? Literally, you can't make this kind of stuff up. This is actually the scripture that they prayed in the Hebrides revival. Isaiah wow. 44, verse 3, for I will pour out water to quench your thirst and to irrigate your parched fields. I do have to pray that, I, I'm sorry, we got to just go with this. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last bit here is, I will pour out my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your children. I know there are so many moms and dads who are oh, praying yes. and crying out for a child to come home. They, they've gone far from the faith, far from the Lord. This is a great promise to stand on. Can I give you one more promise for your arsenal that you can stand on? You can actually take your word when you pray, hold it up to the Lord and say, God, you said. You know what he said? Yeah, he said this in Isaiah 44, 3, which is a word for you guys, which is a word I believe you are called to broadcast and steward revival. In fact, what's going to come out of these programs that you do is people will watch and they will be provoked and they will be like that blacksmith in Hebrides and say, God, would you pour out your spirit again? Because of what they are provoked, they're going to be provoked to cry out by watching this program. But the last bit is this, I'll pour out my spirit on your descendants, my blessing on your children. All I know is this, when it comes to the last days, and we all like to talk about the end times, last days, all sorts of interesting things that we can discuss, we can debate, we can dialogue about, okay? And that's good, it's healthy. But you know what? There's an ironclad word that God himself gave about the end times, the last days. You know what he said? He said in Joel 2 and Acts 2, in the last days, God declares, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. 
your sons and your daughters will prophesy. May I give that to you as a gift? When you're praying for your son or your daughter, you're not just praying for them to come back home and come back and sit with you in a pew in church. That's great. You're going to pray, Lord, you said that my son and my daughter would prophesy. So, Lord, I hold that up as a promise for them. Pour out your spirit on their life. Lord, may they not just come home. May they be a revivalist. May they prophesy. May they be a cultural reformer in the name of Jesus. That's why the enemy opposes them. Amanda, I feel like, Amanda, you have something that's in your spirit right now. I'm just seeing, I'm seeing our sons and daughters coming home, but not just coming home and being used. I've seen it in my oldest son. I'm seeing it in my other sons and I'm believing it for my daughter. Yeah. And we're going to see it. That's what I know. Like God just bringing you to confirm the word yeah. that is within our hearts. And I encourage you to hang tightly onto the word of oh. God. Do not let go. Stand firm. Yeah. We're going to see the kingdom of God come and move yeah. within you know, our homes. I, I, I love that, Amanda. And I love that you said that word, perhaps. Yeah. Where I was just reading to Jeremiah, where Jeremiah says, perhaps, and God says, perhaps. Yeah, God yeah, yeah. even says, perhaps they'll repent. I mean, can you just speak to that? That, that, that kind of open invitation from God. You know, I think also, interestingly enough, everybody's talking about Esther right now. And when that invitation is extended to Esther, in her generation, there's that word, I believe from Mordecai to Esther, you know, it's like, perhaps you have been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. We need to respond to that because that, that's not ambiguous. It's not like, well, maybe God's going to do it. Maybe he's not. No, no, God actually wants to pour out his spirit. God wants to change the moral, spiritual landscape of this nation. He wants to. That is ironclad. That is decided. The word of God makes a very strong case for that. The perhaps is up to us. The pro well, what is, isn't God sovereign? He sure is, but he made a sovereign decision to fill you and me with his Holy Spirit. Yes. He really did. Does God still break in, do what he wants? Absolutely. I'm, gl I'm glad he does. I'm glad God doesn't take orders from us. At the same time, he has made this decision that is startling and encouraging to fill us with his spirit, to give us his word. He, he is looking for a people in the earth who would say, God, whatever the cost, even if I, if I lose my reputation, if I lose my dignity, again, that's one of the things that wars against revival. I'm convinced every and any church in the nation can experience a move of God. But the things that war against it are the religious spirit. In other words, well, we got to keep doing things the way we've always done them, brother. Uh, no, no, no we, we, we can't because a generation is being lost. We, we can't because that which was considered sinful is now being celebrated. We have no luxury to say we're going to keep perpetuating something, a, a way of doing formal religion when in fact the nation around us mm -hmm. is being infected. Um, we need to break past that religious thing. But also in the age of social media, we need to say, God, I'm willing to lay down my reputation. Everybody's about likes and follows and all that. And listen, we seize those things. We use them. We must steward them. Otherwise, a vacuum will be made and the devil is going to completely use all of that nonsense. So we use social media. We use technology. But my encouragement is this. At the end of the day, we've got to lay down our reputation because when we welcome the fullness of the Holy Spirit, um, <laughs> I do think of this. I think on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, I'm so glad that Peter did not shut down the day of Pentecost. I know that sounds goofy. But in our present day and age, the Holy Spirit will move unusually. And what will happen is like, oh, no, we got to stop that. Be why? Well, there's a few people who are going to get offended. Well, remember on the day of Pentecost, it says they were amazed. They were astounded. This is all the multitudes. These are a lot of people. Like when a lot of people show up sometimes at our gatherings, we feel a pressure to go and, and almost cater to the lowest common denominator. In other words, well, we've got a lot of people that we can minister to. Let's give them just, just Christianity light. Let, let's give them motivation. Let's, listen, motivation, encouragement, that's all good. But when we have the multitudes, just like Peter, Peter had this moment where the multitudes were there. He, he could have shut that down. That'd be terrifying. But no, no, no. He said, hey, the Holy Spirit fell and all this unusual stuff was happening. A, a mighty rushing wind, cloven tongues of fire, a, a, a sound. He, he, he didn't get up and shut anything down. He got up. And I feel like this is what the Lord is doing. He's going to release an anointing on pastors and leaders in this hour. As the Spirit of God falls, it'll be this Peter anointing where you get up in the middle of it and say, hey, this is that. This is that. 
that was prophesied and spoken about by the prophet Joel. In other words, as God comes, whoa, and I feel it even now. I actually feel like yeah. those of you in the it's Northeast, like, in Pennsylvania, get ready. If you're a, just, I just keep having a burden for pastors and leaders. I actually feel like God's going to invade churches. I actually believe you're going to have meetings that go four and five hours, not because you're trying to be spiritual, but because you cannot stop the flow of the Holy Spirit. And in those meetings, you're going to have a temptation. You're going to have the opportunity to shut it down, close it down prematurely, or you're going to have the opportunity to be Peter. You can get up and say, hey, I know this person over there is wailing because they're being set free from 20 years of depression. I know this person over there is laughing hysterically because trauma is being broken off with the joy of the Lord. I know that person over there looks like they're being set free from a demon. Come on, our, our prayer team is going to go minister to them. Those people over there are getting healed by, from sickness. That pa you, you, pastor, leader, you're going to have the opportunity to get up and say, hey, but all this, this is that. Oh, we burn for that. We burn for that. We actually want to see people liberated and set free and really touched by the power of God. I don't want to just say that. When he moves like that, and I'll say this last thing, please be sensitive to the subtle movements of the Holy Spirit. Because, you know, he comes in. I've been in, we've all probably been in gatherings where, you know, the Holy Spirit's moving. And it's so gentle at first. It's so gentle. It's so subtle. But it's almost like the only ones who will be able to recognize it are those who are closest to him. That those who are near and close to him, they'll recognize that he's moving and they'll have an opportunity. Do we welcome what he's doing or do we shut it down? But when you welcome what he's doing, it only intensifies. I, the, Lord, the Lord told me this. He said, Larry, when you welcome my subtle movements, you are positioning yourselves for a supernatural moment. When we welcome just those subtle movements of the Spirit, then I believe when we say, hey, God, come and do what you want. You're moving. We celebrate it. We say, you know, like, like Randy Clark from Toronto, he'd say, more, Lord. We welcome it. We bless what you're doing. He will just only intensify and increase the manifestation of his presence. Why? I know this. I don't like going places where I'm just tolerated. I don't, you know that. When you go to somewhere, you're around people, they just tolerate you. I don't want to go there. You want to go where you're celebrated. And I really believe God's raising up a people in Pennsylvania, in Pittsburgh, in the eastern seaboard, who say, God, we celebrate the Holy Spirit because really He is the only answer. He is yes. the Spirit of Christ. May I just encourage you on that? Is that every time the Spirit moves in power, doing the stuff that I just talked about, it's confirmation that Jesus died, rose again, ascended to the Father's right hand, and that Jesus got everything He paid for and everything He prayed for. Because, you know, doesn't the gospel, doesn't Jesus say, hey, I'm going to go, but I'm going to pray the Father. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I'm going to pray to the Father, and he's going to send the Holy Spirit. So may I encourage you, every time the Spirit moves in power, every time maybe some of that unusual stuff happens and it really is the Holy Spirit, it is a testimony that Jesus is actually seated at the Father's right hand, and he actually prayed and got his prayer answered. And his prayer was that we would receive the Holy Spirit. Whew. There's so much that you have just shared and unpacked. And it's the whole time you were talking, Larry, I just heard God say, take your position. Come on. Take your position, soldier. Mm. It is time. There is no more seating on the sidelines. It is time for you to get off off the bench, get on the field, and it's time for us to go to war. Mm. God is training our hands for battle. Mm. God is training us when we are in the secret place and we are interceding and we are praying and there's a place of intercession that you have to go to where you just release and you yield all to him. That's what God is calling us in this season. Are you willing to get uncomfortable? Are you willing to switch and move your schedule around mm -hmm. so you can be just in the presence of God? What are you willing to do in this season? We no mm -hmm. longer can just sit on the sidelines. God is saying, take your position, Ecclesia. Yeah. That's it. We're called as the Ecclesia, the called out ones. It's a governmental position. Yeah. Yeah. We belong to the kingdom of God for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And I see, <laughs> I see an army arising, especially in Gen Z right now. That's they right. are on fire for God. Mm -hmm. So regardless of what you're hearing, regardless of what, you know, he, people are saying, just know that God is on the throne, that God is moving, and that he is invading the earth with his glory and his fire and his presence. Yeah. But you can miss it 
if you're not in position. Yeah. So today we just encourage you to get in position, mm -hmm. to seek the Holy Spirit, to listen to God, to intercede like never before, and don't move mm -hmm. until you hear so that you're able to act. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Amen. I just agree so much. And when Larry, when you were speaking, I got this feeling like this is not a movement for big wigs, okay? This is not like for the, for name people or people that, that you that expect this is gonna, that is gonna, they'll be involved too, but it's for you. It's for yes. you to be yes. that person, to be that one right. that, that says, I'm just gonna do, Lord, I've got this little area here, bring that, like the blacksmith, bring the water, uh -huh. bring the water to this dry place. Uh -huh. Larry, it's not gonna be about the, just the big people. Yeah. It's, it's, it's everybody. Uh, yeah. yeah, all I know is this, is that the prophecy that God gave us concerning the last days and times is I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Yeah. Here's the bottom line we're talking about. It's not just for big wigs, pastors, all that. We need them. We need them yeah. in position. But here's the bottom line is that all flesh can't fit in our church buildings. All flesh can't even fit in the biggest stadium. Where is all flesh? Where is all the people? They're where you are. That's right. You actually carry, like my brother here was saying, you carry the water. You carry the rain. You carry the outpouring of the Spirit because you're filled with the Spirit. Wherever you go, and the wonderful thing is wherever you go, you release Him and it changes the atmosphere and the environment around you. Amen. Amen. I say, just begin to see what Larry was speaking. See it in your heart. The Holy Spirit left me see all of my kids prophesying while yep. you were speaking. It's not there yet in the natural, but I saw it in the spiritual and it captivated my heart. So I encourage you to begin to allow the Holy Spirit to give you vision of what is to come because it is worth tarrying in the Holy Spirit for it is worth every moment of your time. Matter of fact, we shook up this jar of muddy water and we left it sit for three days and the mud just begin to go to the bottom and every day it was more clear and that's what happens with us when we sit with God all the muddy particles of life that we're moving around we're doing 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 but it's the state of being in the presence of God that settles the muddy water and allows us to hear and to see the things of the spirit so press in and see what God sees today. It's so good. Amen. <laughs> We're Amen. just sitting here. I feel like the glory no, fire is like. <laughs> it's like I, I, I sense like the, well, Larry even said I felt something. I, I was feeling it at the same yeah, time. So with Cindy, God is doing something. God has got a message for you today. This is a special program because we wanted to bring what the Spirit is saying to you today. God's got a place for you, and He's got incredible things for you. Hang on to Him. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.